Today, I'm gonna to talk to you about exactly what you need to do to become fluent and become fluent fast. That's coming up. What's up, everyone? My name is Wes. This is Interactive English, which is all about helping you practice and improve your English skills. And today, I, I want to talk to you about how you can achieve English fluency and do so quickly. And the way that you're going to do that is, is by creating an English bubble, and you are going to surround yourself with the English language. It's like your own personal learning environment. And I want to talk to you about some useful ways in which you can shape that bubble and what you need to do in order to achieve fluency quickly. The first thing that you can do, it's very simple, everybody can do it, and that is read every day. I tell this to learners all the time, and this is probably one of the best habits that you can get into because reading is going to help you build your vocabulary, you'll be able to see how correct grammar structures are being used, and you know, I understand that it's not possible to take a long book and read something every day, but just start with something simple and easy and even short. You can read a newspaper article or even just something that you read online. As long as you read something every day, then that is a huge step that you are taking towards achieving English fluency. The next thing that you can do is take some online classes. The third thing you can do is listen to a podcast. And the reason I say you should listen to a podcast is because it's like you're listening to a conversation. When you're listening to a podcast, you don't have images that you can follow so that you understand what people are talking about. You really have to pay attention to what it is that you're hearing and try to put a picture in your mind. So it's really a great way to hone your listening skills and understand conversational English. Another part of the English bubble is writing down new words and phrases. If you write down new words and phrases that you're learning, then, then you're keeping a record of everything that you should review. Because that means that you can go back one week later or one month later, review the material, and when you do that, that is going to help you put these words and phrases into your active memory. So so that you can use them in speaking, you can use them in writing, use them easily and fluently. Number five is focus on language that is suitable to you. And what I mean by that is not everybody's trying to learn the exact same thing in English. For example, you want to learn new vocabulary. If somebody is a doctor, then they may not need to study the vocabulary of a pilot. So take that into consideration when you're trying to figure out, okay, what should I be studying? Think about what it is that you do. What is your job? What, what are the things that you like? And those are the words and phrases that you should focus on learning. Those are the words and phrases that you should be writing down because this is the information that you want to use when you're having a conversation. You're going to talk about your job. You're going to talk about the things that you're interested in. And if you have that information that's suitable to you, then you're going to be able to talk about these things easily and fluently. Number six is study other things in English. There is a language learning method called content integrated language learning. And basically what this is, is that you are learning about another topic, but you are doing so in English. This is what they do at international schools. You are studying other subjects in English. You are learning about math in English. You are learning about science in English. So again, think about those things that you are interested in. Maybe you like cars or sports or gardening and use that to learn English. Read about those things in English. Take some online classes about those things in English. This is what it means to form that English bubble and surround yourself with the language. Number seven, watch more of our lessons. We have over 200 English lessons to help you guys practice and improve your English skills. Many of them are interactive. We want you guys to be active language learners and actually practice your listening skills, practice your speaking skills, practice your writing skills. That's what it's all about. So go to our YouTube channel, scroll through the lessons, find one that you haven't seen, watch it, and then write to us in the comments. Number eight is find a study partner. This could be a friend, a family member, you could even talk to yourself in the mirror. The most important thing is that, that you are practicing your skills. And if you're able to find a study partner, it's useful because it, it's going to help keep you motivated. It's also going to make you accountable to learning the language because you're bringing somebody else into your bubble. So if you don't have a study partner, don't give up, don't get discouraged, just keep looking, keep practicing. That is the most important thing. Number nine, start thinking in English. 
This is a great way to practice your skills that I don't think many people even consider. And it's something that's very easy to do because there are moments during the day where you, you might not be doing anything. Maybe you're riding on a bus or maybe you're walking down the street. If you're able to take those moments, those brief moments and say to yourself, okay, for the next minute, I'm just going to think in English. Whatever thoughts that are going on in my head, I'm just going to think about them in English. I'm gonna think about those things that I see in English. I'm gonna think about what it is that I feel in English. If you can set aside a brief moment during the day to say, okay, I'm going to think in English, then you are practicing all of your skills. You are using your vocabulary, you are using your grammar, you are using your pronunciation because you're speaking using your inside voice. And the more exposure that you get to the language, the stronger that your English bubble is, then this is just going to start happening naturally. You're just going to start thinking in English on your own. So start thinking in English to start achieving fluency. The next thing that I want you to do is strengthen your weaknesses. If you can identify your weaknesses and focus on those, then that is going to help your overall fluency. For example, Listening is the most difficult language skill for me. So whenever I'm learning another language, I have to work extra hard when it comes to listening. And that also means that I need more listening exposure. I need to listen to more music. I need to listen to more conversations because the more listening exposure I get, the more I'll be able to improve my skills. And that means that my language skills are going to be more balanced because when we're talking about fluency, then we're talking about everything. We're not just talking about about one language skill. So if you can identify some of your weaknesses and focus on improving them, then that's going to help your overall fluency. Number 11, develop a routine. This is a great habit to get into because if you're able to tell yourself, okay, I am going to study at this time on these days, then that's going to help you keep track of your progress as well as make you accountable for your own learning. So if you're able to say, okay, on this day, I'm going to read at this time, I'm going to think in English and you can develop a routine and stick to that routine week after week after week then you will notice a huge difference in your fluency. Number 12, use subtitles to match words and phrases with their correct pronunciation. This, this is very useful and it's something that I tell learners to do all the time. I understand that there are many people out there, they just wanna focus on their listening skills and they don't want to use subtitles. But when you use subtitles, it is a great opportunity to practice more than one skill because you are reading, you are listening, and you are hearing the correct pronunciation of these words and phrases so that the next time you want to use these same words, you'll be able to say them correctly. So there's a lot of value in using subtitles to reinforce the correct pronunciation, which in turn improves your fluency. Number 13, practice your writing, even if it's just a little bit. And, and again, try to do it each day. So we've talked about reading. We've talked about listening. We've talked about finding a study partner so you can practice your speaking. Please, please, please do not forget forget about writing. It's easy. It's simple. You can write to us in the comments right now. It doesn't have to be a long message, but you're just practicing your language skills. And that's what it's all about because that's what's going to help you develop your fluency. Number 14 is stay around your level. And when I say this, I'm talking about listening and reading. So for example, often learners will tell me, I understand everything that you're saying, but when I turn on a movie, I don't understand anything. Well, that's because I naturally speak slower, especially after many, many, many years of teaching English. Somebody like me, I'm gonna be easier to understand, which means that if you understand everything I'm saying, then this might be more to your level. And when you practice at your level, that is when you give yourself the most benefit to improve your listening skills as well as your reading skills. Read at the appropriate level. So remember, when you're in your bubble, try to stay at your level or even just a little above Above your level, that's going to help you improve the most. The next thing that I want you to do is be realistic with your expectations. I've had learners ask me before, they say, you know, if I work really hard, can I learn English in three months? Well, th that is possible. Everybody is a different type of learner. Some people are able to learn languages within two months. 
If, if you're like me, then it's going to take you a longer time. The ultimate goal, the reason for creating this language learning environment, the reason for creating your English bubble is so that you can move as fast as you can for the type of learner that you are. Try not to worry too much about time because that might just raise your anxiety and, and fill you more with stress, and that's just gonna make it harder to learn. But if you're able to do the things that I've been telling you to do, read a little bit each day, keep a notebook of new words and phrases, watch our videos, then you will be creating this English bubble. Then I promise you, you will be learning as fast as you possibly can. Number 16, start a conversation. And when I say this, I, I don't necessarily mean a conversation in which you are speaking to another person. If you can do that, then that's great. What I mean is try to find other ways to connect with people. Think about, again, what are those things that you're interested in? Let's say, for example, you are interested in fashion. Well, search different Facebook groups that talk about fashion and that the common language is in English. Start a conversation, share the information that you know about fashion and try to connect with those people because again, you're connecting with them in English. You might find somebody that you can write with back and forth and practice your English skills. Maybe you'll be able to connect with them and actually have a spoken conversation with them. Again you'll be practicing your English skills. So I encourage you, be proactive, start a conversation. It's going to help you connect with other people so that you can improve your skills and achieve fluency. Number 17, don't be afraid to give your brain a rest. I know that we talked about learning English fast, but again, you are going to learn as fast as you possibly can if you're gonna be able to create this English bubble. But I know from time to time, you, you might need a break if that break is a few days, if that break is a week. It goes back to setting a schedule as well as having realistic expectations. But I understand we are not robots. If you need to give your brain a rest, then I encourage you to do so. And if you're able to set that routine and keep that schedule, then you'll give yourself a break. And then when it's time, you'll jump back into it. And that is going to help you achieve English fluency, which is the ultimate goal. What I want you to do now is take all of those suggestions and use them to create your English bubble and surround yourself with the language because that is going to help you achieve fluency and achieve it quickly. If you enjoyed this lesson, please hit that like button. And as always, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.